Chapter 7. Senapod the Champ Senapod looked much better after a long bath, although when he slapped some yoghurt under each arm, it did feel a bit odd. After pulling on Mrs Lightspeed's altered dressing gown, he searched through his ancient bandages. Shortly, he found a flattened piece of parchment. He looked at it intently before glancing around the room. He crossed to the big mirror and carefully pushed the ancient treasure map out of sight behind it. Then he noticed his reflection. At 4,600 years old, he was in good shape. He tried on the ceremonial toilet tube beard, but he had never come across elastic before. The beard was accidentally catapulted across the room. It scored a direct hit on a small flower pot, sending it crashing into the toilet bowl, where it floated about rather prettily. At his second attempt, the beard knocked the bubble mix jar into the bath. The third time, it bounced off the ceiling and rocketed down into the frothy bubbles that were already rising over the sides of the tub. Senapos whisked his hand around, searching for the lost beard and creating even bigger bubbles. Eventually, he fished out a very soggy piece of card with a dollop of yoghurt on one end. He held it to his chin, but it didn't look right at all. Never mind, he'd order the slaves downstairs to make him another. Senapod shouted from behind the closed door, Make way for Senapod, he whose name shall rumble, etc. The pharaoh desires to leave his bath. He stopped and waited. Was nobody going to open the door for his royal personage? Where were those slaves? He tried again. Make way for Senapod, Lord of Serpents, Master of Hippos, Osiris on. The door was thrown open by Carrie and her mother. Do you have to stand up here shouting? demanded Carrie. And why are you talking to the door? I was waiting for a worm to open it, said Senapod pompously. Oh, we've gone back to being worms, have we? We're not your slaves, you know. But you are, insisted Senapod. You must be my slaves. Oh, yes. Why? Carrie folded her arms defiantly. Senapod's reply was very simple. Because I am the pharaoh and all people are my slaves. This shut Carrie up long enough for Mrs Lightspeed to admire her dressing gown. You do look nice, Senny. Those sleeves are just the right length. But what about that lovely beard? The pharaoh held out a handful of mushy cards. Never mind, Ben can soon make a new one. Her face took on a bewildered squint as she watched a tidal wave of bubbles creep up behind Senapod. Oh dear, I think you may have used a bit too much bubble mix. Carrie, take Senny downstairs. Do not call me Senny, hissed the pharaoh. Don't call us worms then, Mrs Lightspeed suggested, trying to load handfuls of bubbles back into the bath. At the top of the stairs, Senapod paused and listened. Weird bleeping and blooping noises came from Bed's bedroom. The pharaoh went across and poked his ancient head around the door. In an instant, he was transfixed by, transfixed by a scene of such utter wonder. He almost fainted with pleasure. Ben's eyes were glued to his TV screen, where strange little creatures were whizzing around, running, leaping, fighting, all to the accompaniment of magical sounds. Ben's fingers flicked across his control pad. Suddenly, a mournful drone came from the TV and Ben sighed. Rats, I've died! Senapod stepped into the room and spoke in an awed whisper. What is this wonderful machine? This? It's my mega CD. I'm playing a game called Magnificent Marvin. Ben held up the control pad. Want to go? Senapod sat down quickly and grabbed the pad. Ben hastily explained all the different buttons, but the pharaoh just wanted to get going. Ben started the programme. Within 30 seconds, Senapod had died three times. He started again, reached level one, then level two. Ben couldn't believe how quickly he'd picked it up. Within 10 minutes, Senapod was on level seven and Ben was hopping up and down. It's not fair. I've only ever got to level five. All the same, he was fascinated by the skill and ease with which this ancient Egyptian was racing through the game. Soon the TV gave a whoop of triumph and a message flashed on screen. Well done, Senapod. You are the champion. Congratulations from Magnificent Marvin. The pharaoh sighed with pleasure and handed the control back to Ben, who was quite speechless. Thank you. That was good. Senapod got as far as the door, then stopped. A small frown added even more wrinkles to his brow. He turned back to Ben. This Magnificent Marvin, he asked. Was he a pharaoh who came after me?